In this video, I'm going to explain how to do integration using polar coordinates, but first I want to review this arc length formula. If we have a circle of radius r and this angle is delta theta, then the length of this arc, this arc length is r times delta theta. Assuming that we're using radians, that's the arc length, r times delta theta. And the arc length the arc length is r delta theta. That's going to be a useful formula for us. So suppose that we want to integrate a function f over a region r that looks like this. This region r is a polar rectangle. It consists of all points using polar coordinates. It consists of all points r theta such that r is between a and b and the angle theta is between alpha and beta. Visually, it looks like this. And we want to compute the integral of a function f over this polar rectangle. How can we compute that integral? We're going to derive a special formula for doing this integral. Now, how do we compute any integral? What's the general pattern? The way we do it is we take the region that we're integrating over, we chop up the region into tiny pieces, we compute the contribution of each piece, and we add up all those individual contributions. That's how integration works. When we chop up the region into tiny pieces, those tiny pieces don't have to be rectangles. And in this case, we're going to chop up our region R into tiny pieces that look like this. These little pieces, they're not rectangles. What they are instead is they are polar rectangles. And now we're, we have to figure out how to compute the contribution of each of these individual, of each of these individual tiny pieces. When we chop up our region R like this, correspondingly, the interval from A to B is partitioned like this. We have a list of R values. A is called R0, B is Rn. We have a list of equally spaced R values. And the interval from alpha to beta is partitioned like this. We have a list of equally spaced angles. This angle alpha is called theta zero. This angle beta is called theta n. We have a list of equally spaced angles. Now let's figure out how to, how to compute the contribution of this specific piece right here. The way we do that is we have to select a point that belongs to this subregion and that point can be selected arbitrarily. For simplicity, I'm going to select this point here in the lower right of that region. And the coordinates of that point, the polar coordinates of that point are r i comma theta j. Those are the polar coordinates of that point. The Cartesian coordinates of this point are r i cosine theta j comma r i sine of theta j. These are the Cartesian coordinates of this particular point right here, this point here. Now, the way what do we do next to compute the contribution of this little subregion? We have to evaluate the function we're integrating at this particular point that we selected. So that means that we have to compute f, the function we have to take, we have to evaluate f at this particular point. And then we have to multiply this value by the area of this subregion. And what is the area of this subregion? Well, since this subregion is very tiny, you can see visually this subregion is approximately just a rectangle. It's truly, we know, it's truly a polar rectangle 
But if you have a very tiny polar rectangle like this, then it is approximately just a rectangle. And we know the area of a rectangle, it's just length times width. And the, what's the width? The width is delta r. What's the length? Well, here's where we have to use our arc length formula. The length of this arc here is r sub i multiplied by delta theta. That's the length of this arc here. And the width of this, the width of this little rectangle, as we mentioned, is delta r. So here we have the contribution of this particular subregion. This is the contribution. The next thing we have to do is sum up the contributions of all these tiny subregions. So let's do that next. So this is the contribution of that one particular subregion. Now we have to sum up the contributions of all those tiny subregions. So that means we have to do this sum, the sum from j equals zero to m minus one of the sum from i equals zero to n minus one. This big sum what we're doing here is we're summing up the contributions from all these, all the tiny subregions. Now, let's take this delta theta and pull that out front. So this is equal to the sum from j equals zero to m minus one of delta theta times the sum from i equals zero to n minus one of f of r i cosine theta j r i sine of theta j times r i times delta r. Now here's the key observation. This inner summation, this looks like a Riemann sum that approximates an integral and the Riemann sum, the integral that is approximated by this Riemann sum is the integral from A to B of F of R cosine theta J, R sine theta J, R dr. This inner sum, this inner sum is a Riemann sum and it approximates this integral, this integral. So what we have is approximately the sum from j equals zero to m minus one of Let's call this quantity, let's call this value g of theta j. So this big sum is approximately equal to the sum from j equals zero to m minus one of g of theta j times delta theta. But this, now we recognize here, this also is a Riemann sum. And this Riemann sum approximates the integral from alpha to beta of g of theta d theta. This sum is a Riemann sum that approximates this integral. So now let's put these pieces together. The integral over r of our function f is approximately this integral from alpha to beta of g of theta d theta, but we defined g of theta 
to be the integral from a to b of f of r cosine theta r sine theta r dr. That was our definition of g. So, what we end up with is the integral from alpha to beta of the integral from a to b of f of r cosine theta r sine theta r dr d theta. And this is our formula This is our formula for integrating over a polar rectangle using polar coordinates. Now I want to do an example of using this formula that we discovered to evaluate an integral. And the example that we're going to look at is, we're going to compute the integral of this function x squared plus y squared over the region r, which is, which is shaded in here. This region r is a polar rectangle, and it could be described like this. r is in between 1 and 2, and theta is in between 0 and pi. So if we're using polar coordinates, this region can be described as a set of all points r theta such that r is between 1 and 2, theta is between 0 and pi. That's the shaded region here. According to the formula that we discovered, let's call this function f of x, y. According to the formula that we discovered, the integral over r of f of x, y da is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the integral from 1 to 2 of f of r cosine theta r sine theta r dr d theta. And that's equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the integral from 1 to 2. Now, what's f of r cosine theta, r sine theta? That's just f of r cosine theta, r sine theta is equal to this thing squared plus this thing squared. But notice, r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared, that's equal to r squared multiplied by cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So that's just r squared. So this, this term here reduces to just r squared. And so what we're left with is we have to do the integral from 1 to 2 of r squared times r. That's r cubed dr d theta. And now at this point, it's easy to finish off the problem. Let's do this inner integral. An antiderivative of r cubed is r to the fourth over 4. We evaluate our antiderivative at the endpoint, so from 1 to 2. And we get 2 to the 4th over 4. That's 16 over 4. In other words, just 4. And then minus 1 over 4. OK. So that's equal to 3.75. So what we're left with here, what we have now is the integral from 0 to pi of just 3.75 this constant d theta. And this integral, since we're integrating a constant, the answer is just 3.75 multiplied by pi. 
pi. That's the final answer.